This is the first recording on Chapter 17, the Statement of Cash Flows. Um, okay, the usefulness of the Statement of Cash Flows. So the Statement of Cash Flows was added in the 70s because there were a lot of companies that started, um, startup companies that started becoming listed on stock exchanges in the 70s and a lot of these startup companies were going bankrupt and investors didn't understand why that was happening and they went to Congress and complained about this and because of that um, the statement of cash flow was added to the required statements. Um, prior to that time, the only statements that were required was the balance sheet, statement of owner's equity, and the income statement. So the addition of the statement of cash flows required um, the statement that, that explained uh, to investors how the cash flows were different from net income under accrual basis accounting. So investors were generally more accustomed to looking at cash basis accounting than accrual basis accounting. So there was a misconception um, why companies that were profitable under accrual basis accounting did not have enough cash to remain solvent. So the statement of cash flow uh, explains a company's ability to generate cash flows or future cash flows and whether or not they have cash available to meet the future obligations and make dividend payments. It also explains the differences between net income under accrual basis accounting and their cash available from operating activities. It also explains how cash has been used by investing and financing activities during the period. So in order to understand the uh, statement of cash flows, we have to understand what um, activities flow under or fall under operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. So um, operating activities generally are items that uh, are shown on the income statement. Investing activities generally um, are items that uh, are represented by changes in investment accounts and long-term assets. So investing activities, we're talking about uh, purchases or sales of long-term assets. And financing activities are changes in your long-term liabilities or your stockholders' equity. So financing activities would be sources and uses of debt and equity. So how is the company financing its activities? Are they borrowing from banks or creditors issuing debt or are they issuing stock? So uh, further uh, explanation of this. So operating activities, these would be cash flows that are coming from the sale of goods or services. They could be interest received or dividends received. And for cash outflows, these would be payments for inventory items, payments for employee wages, payments for taxes to the government, payments for interest when we have uh, interest due on amounts that have been borrowed, um, payments for expenses such as utilities or um, property taxes or supplies um, needed for business operations. So um, those would be different operating inflows and different operating outflows, cash outflows. Investing activities are changes to uh, investments and long-term assets. So inflows would be from the sale of property, plant, and equipment, sale of debt or equity securities. Um, so debt that we hold in other companies, so investment in other companies' bonds, investment in other companies' stocks. So when we sell those investments, those would be cash inflows. Or when we collect loans we've made to other companies. And then cash outflows for investing activities would be the purchase of property, plant, and equipment, or the purchase of investments in other companies, or if we make a loan to another company. And then finally, financing activities are um, cash inflows would occur when we sell 
uh, our stock, so when we issue common stock or when we sell our company's bonds to raise money. So when there's an issue of a bond or there's an issue of common stock or when there is a uh, sale of our treasury stock. And cash outflows would occur when we make dividend payments. So this only holds for cash dividends. Um, or when we um, are paying off our long-term debt. So if we uh, debt hits maturity or we have an early retirement of debt, um, you also would have a cash outflow if we um, acquire treasury stock. So if we go out on the market and buy back our own stock. Um, the other thing you would see reported on a statement of cash flows would be significant non-cash activities. So sometimes we have a uh, investing activity that is financed with uh, a financing activity. So there's actually no cash flow that's happening, but there's a change to an investing activity and there's a change to a financing activity. So for example, you purchase assets, but you do it with stock or you do it by issuing bonds. So there's no cash flow happening, but there are invest changes to investing activity and there's changes to financing activities. And they're both important, but there's no cash happening. Happening. So they want to be have it reflected on the statement of cash flows, but there really isn't any cash. So a conversion of bonds into stock, there's two activities happening in the financing section or financing activities, and they want it to be shown on the statement of cash flows because there's a lot of financing activity there, but there's no cash. Um, when you issue debt to purchase assets or when you exchange one asset for another asset, there's a lot of investing activity going on, but there's no cash. So we do have at the bottom of the statement of cash flow is a non-cash activity section where we report these um, type of transactions. Okay, this is BE 17.2. So we're going to identify the um, type of cash flow for each of these activities. So it's either operating, investing, or financing activity. So the purchase of equipment is an investing activity. The proceeds from a sale of a building, because this, like the purchase of equipment, is a long-term asset, that's going to be an investing activity. So what it comes in as is how it goes out. The redemption of bonds. So when you sell bonds, that's a financing activity. So when you redeem the bonds, it's also a financing activity. Now, depreciation expense. Because depreci depreciation is a non-cash activity, um, however, um, if we are doing an indirect method, it would be an operating activity because we would be starting with net income and we have to adjust from net income to cash basis. So you would have to take the non-cash depreciation expense and adjust it out of net income to get to cash flow. Um, payment of dividends. So payment of dividends is a return of um, the value created to the investors, to the people who purchase capital stock. So it has to do with the capital stock. So it's a financing activity. And then issuance of common stock. Um, that's a cash flow in for financing purposes. All right, so now we're going to talk about, um, here's a multiple choice question about operating activities. So which is an example of cash flow from an operating activity? So we've got payment of cash to lenders for interest. So we've got receipt of cash for the sale of capital stock. So sale of capital stock, we know that's financing activity. Payment of cash dividends to the company stockholders. That has to do with uh, financing activity because dividends are a distribution of value to the stockholders. So that's a financing activity. So we know it can't be none of the above. So, uh, well, it could be none of the above actually because these two are financing. But when we pay cash um, for interest, that is going to be treated as an operating activity. So the answer to this would be A. 
which is an example of an investing activity. So receipt of cash from the issuance of bonds. So bonds is a financing activity. Payment of cash to repurchase outstanding capital stock. So that is a treasury stock. That is going to be a financing activity. Receipt of cash from the sale of equipment. That would be an investing activity. And payment of cash to suppliers for inventory. That's an operating activity. So investing would be letter C. Okay, so two ways to uh, do your statement of cash flows. There's a direct method and an indirect method. So direct method is actually the method that GAP would prefer that um, is used. However, the majority of companies actually do the indirect method. Um, the indirect method starts with net income and adjusts it to cash flow. Um, both methods do the same uh, steps for investing and financing activities. So um, statement of cash flows, the basic format, you have your cash flows from operating activities and you end up with a statement net cash provided. So if it increases cash, it's provided. If it decreases cash, you say used. Then you have your cash flows from investing activities. Then you have your cash flows from financing activities. So in each case, if the cash increases, you say net cash provided by. And if your net cash decreases, you say net cash used by. You total the activity in operating, investing, and financing, and that gives you your net cash increased or your net cash decreased. You add that change in cash to your cash at the beginning of the period, and that gives you your cash at the end of the period. And as we talked about previously, you have a last section down here, which are your non-cash investing and financing activities. So these are um, when you purchase um, investing uh, investing things, so um, plant property, plant and equipment using debt or equity. Um, what you need to produce your statement of cash flows are your comparative balance sheet. So that's um, two years, the prior year and current year balance sheet, your current income statement, and then some additional information. So some details about some activities that took place during the year. Um, most companies favor the indirect method because it's easier to prepare. And it focuses on the differences between net income and the cash flow. So that's um, really what um, people are trying to understand. Although it's much easier to, to interpret um, the direct method of the cash flow statement. S um, okay, I'm going to stop here.